This is Ben Kant from 19376 Thermal Equilibrium, and this will be the advanced control theory presentation that we presented at the North Carolina kickoff for the freight frenzy season. Um, so jumping straight into feedback control. With feedback control, this allows us to calculate our, an appropriate motor command based on our reference state and our system's measured state. So the formula for feedback control is pretty simple. So uh, the current motor input U um, is equal to our proportional constant K times the current reference R minus the current system state X. So as I said, U is our current motor command. So this will be like the uh, motor power that we send to our motor. Uh, K is a constant that we will tune. We'll talk about this in a second. Um, R is the target position or target velocity, and X is our measured or observed target of velocity. So to code up feedback control, that'll look something like this. So here we have a basic feedback control method that takes in our reference and our state. Um, we're calculating our error by subtracting the reference from the, st the state from the reference, and then we're multiplying this error by a gain K. And finally, this input U will be sent to something like a motor. In control theory, there's a concept called full state feedback control. So full state feedback is whenever we are performing feedback on multiple relevant states at once. So in this example, our two relevant states is our position state and our velocity state. Um, and so this method is basically just an extension of the previous one, um, where we are combining the two, the two feedback controllers, one for position, one for velocity. Um, this is very similar to a proportional derivative controller, if you've used the PID control method before, but this allows us to put in a direct velocity state instead of just using an estimated velocity to dampen our system. And I'll get to why this is important in a second. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about feed forward control. So feed forward control is really powerful because it allows us to control a motor um, without having any idea of its current state. Um, so um, feed forward works by approximating the dynamics of our motor. So we have two constants here, KV, which stands for uh, proportional to velocity, and KA, which stands for proportional to acceleration. And just by having our tar current target velocity and our target acceleration, without any measurements, we are able to uh, move our system to this target position. Um, and, and the reason for that is because this is velocity, it is a uh, first order system and motors happen to be stable. And so it's very easy to do with the feed forward control. Um, but that's besides the point. Uh, one thing we can do is we can combine full state feedback and feed forward to create an incredibly robust controller. So here we are using the feedback control, the full state feedback, calculate feedback method from earlier to do full state feedback on our target velocity and, and target position. Uh, we're also using feed forward on our target velocity and target acceleration. And then we're summing these two commands together and sending them to our motor. Um, so the important part uh, to figure out is where do we get our target position, velocity, and acceleration from? Uh, usually we have some idea of the end goal. Um, but it's, it's difficult to figure out exactly how fast or how much we want to accelerate. And that's where motion profiling comes in. So what motion profiles do is they calculate where and how fast we should travel. And, um, and this allows us to constrain our system. So uh, the most popular algorithm for FTC, at least, is a technique called, known as trapezoidal motion profiling. And the reason for that is our velocity curve here is in the shape of a trapezoid. Okay. And so the, our motion profile will give us a target position, our target velocity, and a target acceleration at the current point in time. That's just like any point in time along this graph. And then we will feed that into the target position, target velocity, and target acceleration of this command motor method here. Um, one library for FTC that has a great motion profile generator is Roadrunner. Um, Roadrunner even allows for uh, jerk constraints, which is the uh, derivative of acceleration. So you can get even more control movement if you so desire. One area of FTC that's com been completely neglected, but it should be paid a lot more attention to is that of state estimation and filtering. So in control theory, actually controlling our system with feedback is only half the battle. The other battle is accurately knowing where our st system state is. Um, the issue with this is sensors are not perfect and 
to, re to remedy this, we can use uh, special algorithms to increase the sensor performance. So the first algorithm I propose is a low-pass filter. So this is a uh, first-order discrete approximation of a low-pass filter. And this is designed to reduce noise of our measurements. So on the graph on the right, we have a simulated sensor with crazy amounts of noise. So the light blue is um, the measurement. The red line is what the true value should be. And then the purple is after the low pass filter. So as you can see, while the, per while the low pass filter did not um, remove every bit of error from the measurement, um, it definitely made the measurement a lot more usable. And that's what's important. And that's the goal of the low pass filter. Um, so with the low pass filter, we tune this value A, which lives between zero and one. Low values of A will trust the most recent measurements more and low values of A will provide more of a smoothing effect. Uh, the one thing you need to be aware is having a really high value of A will potentially impact your controller's performance to disturbance rejection. Another very powerful al algorithm is that of a Leuenberger observer. Um, this, is a, uh, this can be used as a sensor fusion algorithm. And so here we have it set up to use two sensors uh, and with feedback, we can combine these two uh, sensors to get an opt to get a much better estimate of our system. So here, the uh, current state estimate, so this could be something like a position and acceleration of velocity, is equal to the, uh, the, the, the our, our, our model's estimate, which is just, in this case, it's uh, our first sensor. And then um, we're adding on feedback between our second sensor Z in our previous S in our previous state estimate. And so high values of K will converge and trust the second sensor more and low values of K will do the opposite. Um, the challenge with this is tuning this value of K. Um, and that's where the Kalman filter comes in. So the Kalman filter is a optimal state estimation algorithm. It uses the same per update process as the Leuenberger observer and is even often called an optimal Leuenberger observer. This uses an equation known as the discrete time algebraic Riccati equation, also known as the blue dare, to solve for that gain k. Uh, as the uh, controls engineer, it is our job to, to, ch to choose two values of q and r. These values of q and r um, tell us how much we trust our, in this case, center one and center two. And based on that, we. It, uh, it will iteratively approach an optimal value of k. With a common filter or Leuenberger observer, you don't necessarily have to use the second sensor. You can just use a model in the form of a state space model and then a sensor to then correct the model as you. That is the traditional way to do it. Here you can see an example where we have the long robotics analog gyro and dead wheel odometry fused together to produce an optimal measurement of our angle. And so what this does is this helps eliminate some of the noise in from the analog gyro, but also it helps correct some of the drift of the dead wheel odometry. So we get a really powerful and robust angle measurement from the Kalman filter. And that's where the power of this comes from. If you'd like to learn more about control theory in the context of FTC, um, we've created a website called Control All FTC. That's www.controlalltc.com. Our guide is to be the most comprehensive control theory guide available for First Tech Challenge. Um, and if you so desire, here is a link to the QR code of this presentation. Thank you so much.